ever dreamt of just, you know, taking a 2D picture and poof, getting a production ready 3D model out of it like instantly. Well, today we're doing a deep dive into Tencent's Hanyuan 3D 2.1. Seems like it's not just making that possible, but maybe even changing the whole game. We'll look at what makes it such a leap, uh, especially from the previous version 2.0, and crucially, what you need to know if you actually want to use this thing. That's exactly right. And this really isn't just a small update. It feels more like a, um, a pivotal moment for creating 3D assets. We're looking directly at their GitHub info here. It seems like a genuine step forward. Okay, so let's get into it. What's the main architectural shift? Like, what's the core innovation in 2.1 that makes it stand out? Yeah, so there are two really big things happening here. First off, it's now a fully open source framework. Yeah. And that's the full time they've done this, releasing the full model weights, the training code, everything. Wow, okay, open source. It's huge. Yeah. Because, you know, it lets researchers move faster, sure, but it also means developers, even indie devs, can fine tune it, build tools on top of it, maybe for specific industries, or even just making custom avatars easier than ever. Right. So it's more than just a tool they're giving us. It's like a whole foundation the community can build on. Yeah. That makes sense. What's the second big piece then? The second major innovation is physically based, rendering PBR for the textures. PBR, right. This is a massive upgrade from the old way, which was just RGB-based textures. Mm -hmm. PBR actually simulates how light interacts with materials based on physics. So you get like realistic metallic shine, the way light scatters under a surface, hmm. stuff that used to take ages to do manually or needed really specialized software. Now it's more automatic. Okay, the text sounds impressive, open source PBR, but does it actually look better? How does Hanyuan 3D 2.1 stack up against say 2.0 or other methods when you look at the final 3D asset? Oh, absolutely. The performance jump is pretty clear when you look at the numbers. Hanyuan 3D 2.1, specifically the parts called Hanyuan 3D Paint 2.1 and Shape 2.1, they consistently outperform the older versions and other baselines. Okay, like how? Well, take the CLIP FIDE score, for example. Lower is better there. It means the result is closer to your text prompt, right? It dropped from 26.44 in 2.0 down to 24.78 in 2.1. So it understands what you want better. Exactly. And then there's LPIPS, which kind of measures how similar it looks to a human eye. That also improved from 0 0.1261 down to 0 0.1201. So across the board, whether it's understanding the concept or just the raw visual quality, it's a noticeable improvement. It looks more real, more cohesive. Okay, this sounds genuinely exciting. So for listeners thinking, all right, I want to try this. What's the catch? What kind of setup do you actually need? Ah, uh, yes, the practicalities. You definitely need some decent hardware. The VRAM requirements are uh, pretty substantial. You're looking at 10 gigabytes just for generating the 3D shape. 10 gigs, okay. And 21 gigabytes for adding those 2BR textures. And if you want to do both shape and texture generation together in one go, you'll need about 29 gigabytes of VRAM. So yeah, not exactly entry-level hardware. What about software? They tested it on an NVIDIA A100 GPU using Python 3.0 and PyTorch 2.5.1. But the good news is it supports Mac OS, Windows, and Linux, so it's fairly flexible on the OS side. And that PBR aspect you mentioned, that means these assets are genuinely usable in professional workflows, right? Like, less cleanup needed. Precisely. Mm -hmm. These aren't just static images. They're designed to be production-ready. Which leads to a really interesting point. What feels truly revolutionary here isn't just one of these things, it's the combination. High quality PBR assets plus a completely open source framework. And it just dropped like June 13th, 2025. It really hits that sweet spot of quality and accessibility that creators have been asking for. Yeah, that combination is powerful. So it makes you wonder, doesn't it? How is this newfound access, production ready assets, open model weights, training code, how might that fundamentally shift things for independent creators, for small studios, maybe even for the big players? What does this democratization of high fidelity 3D creation really mean for the future? It's definitely something to keep an eye on. 